Zero Accounting Software 2023. Delete excess general ledger accounts. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this, or ideally some combination between the two, giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might want to come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. We are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation going into the new company file. We set up using the 30 day free trial, that being the bank feed file. Now, all we did last time was set up the company file. We haven't connected to the bank or uploaded any bank feed information. However, the company file has been provided from zero with some information, that being the list of accounts, the chart of accounts, which are used to be the foundational items on which we construct our data input using the financial transactions to be able to build our financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, and related reports. Now, just a quick recap on the navigation or a quick look at the navigation within Zero. Notice the part in the middle here, that's where we have our display screen. So when we're on the home page, we could be navigating from this display screen, but more often what I will typically do is be navigating from the drop down screens up top. So we have our major drop down screens. We've got our uh, bank feed file. This will take us back to our home page if we choose to go back to the home page and we have some other settings and options in this drop down. This is our dashboard, which is basically like our home page. So we can always go back to the home page if we would like to be navigating from the home page. The business drop down has the short term cash flow, the business snapshots, the invoices when we're navigating and tracking. Uh, our invoices to be collecting on the accounts receivable quotes. If we're giving quotes or estimates, we have our bills to be paid for sorting our payables. If we're entering bills, tracking accounts payable and purchase orders, those have to do with ordering inventory, which we may or may not be using depending on our accounting system. And the accounting drop down. we have our bank accounts. That's gonna be one of the primary places we will go this time as we're working with the bank feeds. We have our reports, we have advanced settings here, and then we have some other reports that have been memorized down below. And then we have our contacts, that includes customers, suppliers, and all of them together. And then the easiest way to be navigating 
between our actual uh, forms that we're going to be doing data input with is with the plus button where we have our invoices, our bills, our contact, our quotes, and so on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to do most of the data input with the bank feeds, but the bank feeds will still, in essence, be creating these types of forms as we do the data input with the bank feeds. And we'll take a look at some items when we step away from the bank feeds and we have to use accrual type forms as opposed to cash based type forms such as invoices and so on here. Now, what we want to look at this time is the chart of accounts that has been provided. When we make the balance sheet and the income statement, those reports are made from the accounts in the chart of accounts. And what we're doing when we post transactions using these forms is to put these transactions basically on top of the chart of accounts to be posting to the financial statements. Therefore, the chart of accounts is a foundational item, often a complex item that people if they weren't provided a chart of accounts, might be overwhelmed to build on them, you know, by themselves. So we can find the chart of accounts down here uh, under uh, the accounting chart of accounts down below. Now, zero has got a pretty neat system up top where they have all the accounts and then they also break down the accounts by uh, account categories, assets, liabilities, equity, uh, expense accounts, revenue accounts, uh, and archive accounts. So that's a great tool because then you don't have to kind of scroll down through the entire chart of accounts every time. Uh, if, if you wanted to kind of uh, adjust things like we're going to do here. Uh, so notice the order of the chart of accounts is ordered by the codes, which are account numbers, you might call them. And, and But the account numbers that you create, we have to be quite careful that we don't put them kind of out of order in alignment with the, the type of accounts that are involved. In other words, we should be putting the numbers in place that tie out to the type of account. So current assets are up top. We would have a cash account up top, the bank account that we'll add later with the bank feeds. Then uh, we've got the inventory, which has its own account category because it has to track uh, inventory units, even though it's a current asset type of account from financial statement reporting, fixed assets, type of account, furniture and fixture, or I should say property, plants and equipment, PP&E. And then we have the liabilities here, accounts uh, payable is the first liability. These are current liabilities. And then if we had long-term liabilities, we would have long-term, then equity, and then sales, revenue, uh, and expenses, cost of goods sold, and then expenses. All right, so, so what we wanna do then is think about, is this chart of accounts appropriate for our business? Now, the general rule I would usually say would be what you would like to do is cre is let Zero give you this chart of accounts. It's not too bloated. It hasn't doesn't have too much stuff in it. It's much more reasonably length than some other software like QuickBooks Online, which I think one of the de defaults with it is that it provides you this massive chart of accounts, which has way too many accounts generally, even no matter what industry you choose, right? This one I don't think is too too unwieldy. It's not too long. So the general rule would be once you start doing the data input, see if this chart of accounts is appropriate. If there's an account as you do the data input in here that suits your needs, then use it. If there's not an account that you like specifically and you just don't like the naming of the account, for example, instead of creating a new account, go into this chart of accounts and actually just change the name of it so you don't end up with two accounts which have similar names like utilities and then an electric uh, uh, expense account where you might actually post to both of them when you're just doing data input and then you then you're not being consistent in your posting that's what you want to avoid and then if you're not if you don't have any account in here then you can add the account at that time only at that time uh and then after like a month or two months of data input you can go into your chart of accounts find the accounts which you don't think are useful to you because you're not using them and make and delete them or make them inactive so that when you do your data input in the future, you don't have to sort through this long list of a chart of accounts. It would be faster, it's easier, it's cleaner if you only have a chart of accounts of accounts that you're actually using. And anything you're not using, you make them inactive so that when you hit the drop down to choose an account, 
again, you don't have that long, massive list of accounts. Now, usually the accounts that we're gonna to post to when we do the normal data input, we're gonna be entering bank fee transactions. And usually when money comes out of our bank, which is the major, which what normally happens with the bank feeds, money comes in, that's revenue, that's one account usually, money comes out or goes out, then it's gonna be the expense accounts. That's where the most of the categories are at because we pay for all kinds of different things. And that's where most of the account you know, types are. So that's where you have the most flexibility to decide which accounts do you want to post to? Do you want to have a whole lot of different accounts or do you want to have less accounts? If you have a whole lot of accounts, that means you have a lot more detail in your reporting. However, it also means that you're, you're going to have a very long income statement, for example. If you have too few accounts, you have a very short income statement, easy to read, but not giving you the detail that possibly you would like to have to make better decisions going forward or even to do what you need to do with it, like properly report your financial statements or your taxes or something like that. So uh, what I would like to do is actually go through here and kind of clean out and remove a lot of the accounts so that we can build and create these accounts as we do the data input. So you can see how we can actually create our financial statements as we do the data input from the bank feeds. So I'm going to clean out uh, everything that I think I can basically to get down to the bare bones and then add the accounts as we do the data input. Now you'll also note here when we're in here, you can see that when it has a lock next to it, that's zero saying, hey, look, I'm not going to let you delete this account because I need to have zeros space. This is me interpreting zero. What zero is saying, you have to have an accounts receivable account that is kind of special. If you're not gonna use it, then don't use it. But we need it to have a special function of a sub ledger that will, will track the accounts receivable by customer. So they're gonna lock that one. So you can see some of the same with the accounts payable, unpaid expense claims. It's lock in that because it has special uses for these particular accounts. So we won't be able to delete those. I'm gonna to try to delete most everything else that I can. So if I go to the, let's go to the assets and look at these, uh, look at these one by one. So I'm gonna to go to the assets tab, assets tab. And then if I scroll down, we're not gonna delete the accounts receivable. Prepayments, that's kind of a generic account. I would rather uh, remove it. And when I make prepayments, I'll do it myself. Employee advances, if we don't have employees, we wouldn't be using that vendor deposits. That would only be the case if you had certain industries that you would need that. Uh, inventory assets, I'll keep that because we might be dealing uh, with inventory and it's got a special, uh, it's its own category. Computer and office equipment, that's a fixed asset type of account. I'm gonna remove it because I, I, I might wanna put my own categories of equipment versus uh, furniture and equipment versus e or furniture and fixture versus equipment according to the amortization schedule. So we'll do those as we go. So I'm going to remove the vehicles too. I'll just clean all these out. And as we add that information, I will, I will populate them as we go. I know this is deviating a little bit from the pol from the best practice I talked about before, which is use the chart of accounts as it's there and then change the names as necessary. But again, I want to kind of show as we do the data input, how we can basically build the chart of accounts from the bank feeds. That's my objective here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And it says delete accounts, you have seven accounts. These accounts will be removed. I'm gonna say, okay, cool. And then let's do the same for the liabilities. Let's see if we can clean out the liabilities. Accounts payable, we have to keep that. Gift card liability, that would only be there for certain uh, places. Unpaid expense claims, they won't let us delete that, fine. Payroll wages payable, we don't need that if we don't have employees. Uh, and even if we did, again, we might wanna customize those. And if you turned on Gusto, uh, which is the payroll within Zero, then then you would wanna you know set up your accounts with that, but we're not going into that now. So I'm just gonna remove all of these. A line of credit would only be there for certain companies. So I'm gonna say, let's get rid of that. Suspense account would only be there for certain companies. They won't let us delete the historical rounding tracking. Tr that's fine. Let's delete those items. Boom. So now we're got it as clean as we can be. Clean as me can be. Just like if we, when we, when we get out of the shower or something, cause we're clean. 
as we can be at that point, hopefully. I don't know. It's, uh, anyways, so here's the equity side. So we've got the owner's capital account. Uh, we now it won't. The only one, the one that won't let us delete is retained earnings here, because that's the account that's going to be used when we close out the temporary or income statement accounts to the balance sheet accounts. Notice that all of these other accounts are are accounts that might be dependent on the type of industry that we are in. So owner's capital account is the is an account for owners like a sole proprietorship, like an owner's equity would use an owner's capital account. The thing that's kind of funny here and the thing that's a little bit tricky with these accounts is the retained earnings account is a corporation type of a, of name, meaning you call it retained earnings if you're a corporation. If it was a sole proprietorship, you might name this account like uh, owner's capital account. But the issue with the retained earnings is that it's going to show on the balance sheet and this is the account that kind of automatically the stuff rolls into. That's neat uh, and, and, and useful. Uh, but you might have to do some adjustments to it depending on the in, on the type of business you have. You might just rename this account to uh, owner's capital account. Uh, but if you're a partnership, it causes problems because zero, like all online software, m many of them shows the net income on the balance sheet. That's the thing that's kind of weird. And so you have to, and 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 the, and so that kind of messes things up a little bit when you're trying to allocate to like different partners capital accounts but in any case these are owners capital account this is an investment account which would be like a sole proprietor type of account when you put money into the business and this would be a draws account uh it, when you take money out these would be particular to an to a sole proprietorship type of account if it was a corporation these would be called uh, dividends for the outflow and the investments would be the capital or the the common stock but we'll actually make these as we go so i'm just going to delete i'm going to delete these for now and we'll keep the retained earnings because that's what's going to be rolled into and we'll talk about how we might name those accounts as we do the data input from the bank feeds again so i'm going to say let's get rid of those and then the expense account the big category over here so cost of goods sold, let's keep that one because we might be dealing with inventory. Purchase discount, I'm gonna remove that one. We would only need that if we have a purchase discount. We got subcontractors, I'm gonna remove that one. We've got the, and notice these are direct costs because they're, they're like part of the cost of goods sold possibly. We've got advertising. That might be something that we use oftentimes, but again, I'm gonna remove all of them and create the bank accounts as we go. Bank service charges, I'll create them as we go. Automobile expenses, business license, that's a common expense account, dues and subscriptions, equipment rental, not all companies will have that, meals and entertainment, insurance and uh, professional fees, reimbursed expense, wages, payroll, uh, mileage reimbursement, which we would only have for certain areas. Debt, bad debt, we would only have if we're tracking accounts receivable. Depreciation, we'll possibly need to deal with that with an adjusting entry, miscellaneous, and then other expenses. These two seem somewhat redundant uh, to me, but not too unwieldy of a list of expenses. So if you just started with those and you wanted to keep those, and start, there's far less of them, I believe, than like a QuickBooks Online, which gives you this massively long list of expenses that it's clearly, you know, trying to cover all the bases in one chart of accounts. But even this, uh, if we customize it ourselves and make these accounts as we do the bank feeds, then sometimes that could be an easier way to go. And I think it's a good kind of learning experience as we do, as we, as we do the bank feeds to see how the first data input will differ from one month to this next month of data input. All right, and then the revenue, let's do the same for the revenue one more time. And we're gonna say we have sales, uh, discount received, I'll remove that. And merchandise, I'll remove that. I'm just gonna have sales for the merchandise we sell and service for everything else, service items that we provide. Markup, I'm gonna remove uh, shipping and handling, cash discrepancies, uncategorized income, other income, vendor refunds. I'll remove all those and we just have the two income accounts to start off with. Boom. And so that's pretty clean. So now if I go back to all the accounts and we see them in order, assets, liabilities, uh, equity, we just have our assets, just the 
accounts receivable inventory, liability, accounts payable, unpaid expenses, sales tax, historical adjustments, rounding, tracking, those items they wouldn't let us delete. Equity, we just have retained earnings. Sales, sales or revenue, we have sales, which are the uh, inventory sales service, which is gonna be uh, non-inventory services we provide and then cost of goods sold for inventory expenses. And then we deleted all other expenses except, except uh, and then we have the, the bank revaluations, unrealized currency gains and so on uh, that we won't, won't let us delete on the expenses. So we have the bare bones of a general ledger and we will construct our general ledger as we do the bank feeds in future presentations.